Hello? <laughs> Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Sorry I'm late. Um, I think I had like 25 seconds left when I checked and I had to smack some moisturizer on my face and I didn't do it quick enough. But we're here now, it's fine. <laughs> How's it going? This is, this is the new kit. Hi, so good afternoon. How you doing? How are things? How are things with you? Did you sleep better tonight or last night, today, this morning? <laughs> How did you sleep? How did everyone sleep? I feel like I had a lot of dreams, but I can't remember any of them all. It's always annoying when you wake up and you're like, I had a lot of dreams, I wanna remember, and now it's gone. Hi, cat, good morning. Good morning, good morning. How are we doing, everyone? Yes, if you guys remember, we have finished, actually, I'll go, I'll go grab it. We finished the snood and Shadow didn't hate it. So here it is in all of its tubular glory. No, he didn't. It is still here in one piece it's got its little little hole for for the clip but it it still looks legit so excellent <laughs> yes we have unlocked the snood achievement <laughs> yeah try the voice record thing for half an hour okay oh no oh no so you, you got all, you, you spoke out the frustrations into existence, but in speaking, in speaking the, the stresses and stuff, you upset yourself. But at least, I don't know, at least it put you to sleep. We'd like, you know, you to not fall asleep, um, in such turmoil. <laughs> The idea is to get it out to make, to be cathartic and make you feel better, not be like, well, I feel like shit now, time to go to bed. That's, 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 not, that's not what we thought would happen. Whoops. Oh man. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Have to troubleshoot and see. But sometimes it could be cathartic and you just needed a real good cry or a real good, you know what I mean? So maybe... But if it was upsetting, instead of like relieving, then that's not good. But yes, we are starting a new craft kit today. We have never done this before. We'll see how it goes. I've not opened this. I literally have no idea what is in store for us today. The only thing I know that is that I needed scissors. Um, this is the kit. This is what we're hopefully gonna make. These are all the other options that are available to us if we enjoy it. So apparently it contains instructions, canvas frame, yarn, punch needle, needle threader, finished size eight by 10, and we will need skizzers. Sure. Mole's worth a go, maybe tonight will be better. Tonight will like be venting about my frustration about last night making myself upset. It'll just be an ongoing cycle. An ongoing cycle. Yeah, I didn't know that this was called a cheese plant. If anyone has a cheese plant, let me know. Are they easy to take care of? Are they difficult to take care of? All right. These are the contents. The box is now empty. But yeah, has the day been all right at least, you know? This sounds like the night was not good. I had a bit of a weird morning today too. A monster, that's what I was thinking when I looked at it. It kind of looks like a monster plant. Maybe, I don't know, let's Google. Let's Google cheese plant. Maybe it has different names in different places. That wouldn't surprise me. Cheese plant. Oh, there's a Swiss cheese plant. Oh yeah. It is also called a monstra. Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay. Cat, we literally came to the same conclusion at the same time. Here we are being the same person again. <laughs> Ooh, that's convenient. Oh, that bleeds through. Interesting, interesting. You can see the like 
I'm sure it's water soluble, but it has bled through. But this is obviously what we're making. So that's cool. These are the threads. Okay. I assume this is the new stabby apparatus. That's what I'm thinking. It'll be covered in yarn so it won't it won't matter. Has anybody needle punched before? Punch needled before. Whoa. Oh, this is a big threader. I have a tiny, teeny, tiny. Hi, Mrs. Bullshi. Happy Friday. This is a massive threader. I have tiny versions. You can't even see it. Look at that. Look at that. There it is. There it is. Nope, but I really want to. Okay, cool. So, so, <laughs> so once again, neither of us will know what we're doing, but at least I punched a guy with a needle. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Was the guy yourself? Okay, I feel like I've seen one of these before. I feel like I've definitely seen one of these where I think it's a lot of like stabbing through and we're like feeding the, um, God, my brain, feeding the wool through the thing. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I think this cheese plant could actually be kept alive. That is if we actually are able to complete it. See, guys, this kit actually has instructions or visual aids, unlike the knitting one. What I guess it had images, but it really, they weren't helpful. They were not helpful. So hopefully this one will be more helpful. So we have a punch needle, a threader. Oh, these are in a different language. Maybe we should read the English version. That might help. One punch needle, one needle threader, correct? A printed canvas and great balls of yarn. I'm like, good golly, Miss Molly, great balls of fire. We just got big balls of yarn in varying levels of largeness. Okay. It is okay. I got a bit of work done. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I had a bit of an odd morning. I think it was just like a morning in terms of like I woke up annoyed, and then it's like some really good things happened and I ticked things off my list, but then other things were annoying. So I don't know if you guys remember how I said that I uh, submitted my resume to the chiropractor because I keep saying that if I would ever work in like a traditional job market again, I would like to work there. And the chiropractor kept on being like, you should give us your resume because we maybe want to hire you. And I was like, okay. But I feel like I, I, feel like I took too long because I even remember the day I dropped it off, there were like three receptionists that I were all chatting with each other. And I'm like, there's a lot of receptionists already. I don't know if they need any more. So I woke up and got a response to him saying that they're currently not looking at the moment because they have just filled the roles they were looking for. But they've kind of assured me like, it seems like there's a high turnover rate, so it might still happen. But that was kind of bum, like bummy. Cause I was like, oh man, like I kind of hoped or thought that maybe that would, I'm like ready for that, but only within this very specific context. I'm like, I'm, I'm only ready to go back into the traditional workforce doing this. I don't think I'm ready for anything else. So that was a bit annoying, but I do respect that, you know, I did take a long time. I only really spoke to him during my appointments, which were every like six weeks. So obviously within that six week period, they managed to fill the slots. That makes sense. And then the, um, animated emote, you know, the shadow stretch one that I'm going to have to unveil for our party, our anniversary party. Fiverr automatically marked it as completed, even though I haven't received the final design yet. So I was like, well, shit, now what? Luckily though, the seller is really great. I messaged them privately being like, by the way, Fiverr, like mark this as complete, but I haven't received things based on the revisions I sent everything good. They're like, no problem. We'll send it via this. It's fine. But I was still like, that's more shit I have to deal with. And then um, I couldn't find, and I have not found my uh, headphone adapter so I can listen to music on my phone. I'm sure it'll be fine um, as long as they don't forget about me because it's like theoretically marked as completed. I don't think they have, um, but I'll just have to keep an eye on it. I'm sure it'll be fine though. I plan to order more emotes from them. So if they finish, the static emotes before they finish the animated ones, I'll be like, listen, <laughs> remember? Um, but yeah, now I have no idea. I think because I've been doing a lot of moving my laptop upstairs and downstairs to go over my videos 
um, to, in, to, in anticipation of getting clips from stuff. Um, yeah, so the adapter, because obviously to listen to music on my phone, I need the adapter. To plug it into the P to the laptop, I don't need it. So I keep taking it off. And usually I'm pretty good at like putting it in a safe space. But I think I must have forgotten. So I think it's just somewhere. So that's annoying. Because I wanted to listen to music on my walk because I wanted to stop, you know, the the maladaptive coping strategies of like beating myself up over the other bad, you know, unfortunate, annoying things that happened. So I was just left alone with my thoughts during the walk today, which actually wasn't that bad. It was fine because I managed to, you know, be like, you can't beat yourself up about these things. Should statements are not helpful. So I was able to talk myself out of it, but I was still like, you know, what would have helped some tunes, but that's okay. But sorry guys, we will get started. We will get started. Just gotta listen to me rant for a minute. The day has turned around ish kind of there's still works in progress because the remember how i told you guys right I'm, I'm trying i'm trying you know it's like was it 30 years actually when was i diagnosed i was diagnosed when i was seven i don't know 20 20 plus years of being classified as mentally ill and you know it's about time i goddamn learned how to self-regulate <laughs> you know Every once in a while, that's what I tell myself. I'm like, really guys, like me and my anxiety and stuff. I'm like, really? We've been doing this for like close to a couple decades now. You think we would have learned something by now. My brain's like, yeah, kind of, maybe sometimes. <laughs> oh, Meg, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It was more, it was just an annoying morning, but, and I hope you're doing well. How are things, have you, have you gotten to your 69 followers yet? I know that's, that's currently your goal. Guys, if you if you don't know, um, here, only if Meg's trying to get specifically to 69 followers. So you need to help her get there. But if she is already at 69, don't do it. Okay, look, see, she needs those, she needs to get there. Let's get you 69 before the end of the day. Maybe, hopefully. Does she have 69 now? <gasps> Ooh, Kat, were you the final? <laughs> there we go. Hey, look at that. See, that's already happy Friday. <laughs> Hi, Aurora. <laughs> yeah. So I should follow her maybe. Yeah, geez, Slal, are you slack a lacking? Oh, it was already 69 when you clicked it. Oh, interesting. Well, maybe you gotta, there you go. That's it. Oh my God, it's Friday. I know, right? The day has, the week has just flown by. Um, but I did some very productive adulting things after, you know, I got grumpy is I called the, like the record or the CD slash DVD resale store in my neighborhood that I was telling you guys about that. I was like, I don't know if they're going to take stuff. Turns out they're willing to take all 387 pieces of media. Cause they were like, I called the people and I was like, we have a bunch of assorted CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays. Would you like them? And originally they were like, well, I don't know. Like our boss doesn't pay for that anymore. It's not like he doesn't take them on. And I'm like, we don't need monetary compensation. We just don't want them to end up in a landfill because some of them aren't even opened. They're all in really good condition. We just want them to get a second life somewhere. And he's like, oh yeah, sure. That's fine. And I'm like, there's 387 of them. Are you sure? And they're like, yeah, it's all good. So I was like, well, damn, now we have to get them there. That's, that's the tricky part, but hopefully that's really good. So that means we have magpie to deliver. So once we mail off the magpie and mail off the ziffets and then pop those back, those will all be done, which I'm sure will then leave up space for when we do this all again for books. Cause I am 99% sure that granddad has a whole ass library of books that we also need to do this with. So. We get that out of the house to make room for different kind of media. So it's very exciting. So that was good. And then, yeah, I did, I did some adulting. I made some, I made some phone calls, which is such a millennial thing that it's like, you know, booking stuff. Most of the stuff I've been doing for like the, the anniversary party, I've been doing everything online. I'm like, fill out online forms, online correspondence, sign me up, do that shit all day. Oh no, you need to give them a phone call. I'm like, I have to do what now? I have to physically phone and converse with another human being that I don't know. Can't I just like fill out a form? And it was like, nope. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? So much, so much. So I had I had to make a phone. Yeah, so I, did, I made two phone calls today, guys. Where are all my millennials being like, check it out. Look at us, right? Exactly. Not only did I make one phone call, I made two phone calls today. Pat myself on the back if I do say so myself. <laughs> Honestly. Okay. Needle punching. Let's get this cheese plant cheese in. So what do we do? Thread the needle. We know how to do that. So we need to take the threader, which you can't even see because it's so thin. It's basically a wire and we got to shove the wire through the thing, put the yarn in the thing and go like that. We do that with needle, we do that with cross stitching. So we know how that works. We need, yes, feed the yarn. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Pull the threader through. So this is the part that I'm really concerned about because I'm under the impression that we just like stab it and then we just have to keep track of the design. Okay, let's read all the instructions out. Pull the needle, yes, yes, yes. This part we already know. Feed the yarn through the eye of the top of the threader, leaving the tail about five centimeters. Okay. Carefully pull the thread and feed the loose end through the hole in the neck. Leave the five centimeter tail. So this hole, whoop, this hole, hello, needs some thread in it. Be lurking, yeah, no problem. It looks like torture device. This isn't as bad as the giant needle felting device, you guys. I appreciate the work lurk, Meg, because you guys remember what the needle felting device looks like. This is, this is child's play. And this needle doesn't look nearly as sharp either. I don't think I'm gonna hurt myself with this one. See, we're not gonna hurt ourselves with this one. This is pretty blunt. Yeah. <laughs> remember, just, just for posterity, let's remember which craft has the main torture devices. What's, what's the, the medieval torture device that we all know and love is this bad boy. So let us compare, let us compare weapons of choice. Needle punch, needle felt. Which one would you rather be stabbed with? This one, probably. Cause this one's not gonna hurt as much as this one, unless you're into that kind of thing. But you know, I don't, we don't kink shame here. I'm not gonna yuck your yum, but this will hurt. <laughs> The sharpest one. Yeah, I guess that's true because then it won't, I don't know. <laughs> I think the felting needles. It's true, it's true. And honestly, I, we've, we've been through it. <laughs> we've been through it with them. Okay, put the thread through the thing, leave five centimeters. That's how we, f that's how we, f geez, that's how we fill it. You know if everyone's going, yeah, definitely, mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, so the design is outlined on the back of the canvas. This is the side we will be working on. Oh, okay, that's cool. So this is the side we're working on. So we're following along with the design. That is helpful. Start in section one and move your way around the canvas until the section is complete. Okay. Okay, so we're working from smallest to largest. That's fine, we can do that. Yes! Oh no, Rachel Maxey's mouse was freaking adorable and she also sculpted the hands. Guys, if you don't watch Rachel Maxey on YouTube, you are missing the most whimsical, wholesome content, craft content in your life. She made the cutest little armored mouse creature. No, it made me so happy. And she was, it was so funny because Liam and I were both watching it and he kept looking over at me because she just kept squealing with delight at how cute and wonderful it was. And I was like, I do the exact same thing when I make little creations. Like when I made Freg and when I made like my ghost or my teapot, like guys, we were squealing in the cuteness all over the place. And so he kept looking at me like, is this? And I'm like, this is exactly the process I go through as well. We hate it, we think it looks like trash, and then all of a sudden it all comes together and we're like, this is the cutest fucking thing in the world, I would die for it. As is the needle felting journey. <laughs> That's how it works. So, to start the design, hold the needle punch so the hole 
in the neck is always facing away from the direction you want to stitch. Okay. Okay, right, I get it. So if we want to stitch this way, the hole needs to go this way. Okay, Fergif wants to be added to the map of friendship. All right, Fergif, how this works is you just give me your general location. Don't dox yourself. And then I will add you to the Google map of friendship. We have lots of friends on there. Let me pull that up. But yeah, just give me like a generic Washington state. Okie dokie. Washington, USA. Perfect. And then yeah, then I just literally put the, the pin where that tells me. And so then that way, nobody's doxing themselves. And then we add you to the list. For Gilf. Perfect. And yeah, if you guys want to too, you can then click on the link when it pops up on stream and then you guys can see where all the friends are. Ah, uh, Chad Chad also wants to be. Hi, absolutely. Yeah, give me your generic location and we will plug you in. New Brunswick, hey, Canada, a hey. Excellent, fellow Canaders. I think this is roughly, actually, I don't know if it's this. I think it might be, no, it's not New Brunswick. It's Nova Scotia, I think. My brother might be moving. My brother might be moving to the East Coast at some point because um, his girlfriend wants to get into veterinary school. And so they might move there. <laughs> yes, I do, I do, I do. Yup. I've never been though, unfortunately. I've not been to the East Coast of Canada, which is a real shame because my entire extended family have, um, but I've not. My brother's whole thing is he would love to move to either coast of Canada so he could get fresh seafood every day. Cha Cha 99, make sure I do that correctly. Yeah, mm-hmm, exactly. I think that might be, it might have been PEI. There we go. But yeah, it's like a whole thing because there's only certain ones in Canada that you can go to, but you have to be a legal resident there for a year before you can apply and all this stuff. It sounds like a big complicated journey, but my brother's like, whatever, we'll travel all over Canada so you can become a vet. <laughs> but yeah, so there we go. Some new friends added to the map. And then yeah, if the map comes around, um, you guys can click on that and then yeah, you can see there's a concentration in sort of like the US, Canada, and obviously England, but then we have a few outliers and it's really cool to see. All of our friends together. Yeah, I've heard really good things. I've heard really good things. It's on my to-do, um, it's on my bucket list. And then also, if I'm like, I'm low key hoping that my brother and his girlfriend end up moving out there because it gives me an excuse to visit. Like it gives me an excuse to go and then travel and visit all of the like East Coast. Um, cause yeah, right now I have most of my family in Alberta, so we can do West coast. I have friends in central Canada, but I need, I need a piece some people in the East coast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Plus a place. Exactly. Right. Plus a place to stay. Exactly. Exactly. I really want to be a vet, but I'm really allergic. Oh no, that sucks. Yeah. I don't know. I remember I went through a phase, remember, cause again, we talk about how a lot of people ended up going through a dolphin marine biology phase. And I wanted to be a marine biologist until I found out that you needed to like know maths. And I was like, nope. <laughs> so I didn't. Okay. So continuing on with the instructions, in the direction we want to stitch, we make sure I wonder if it matters what direction we go in because I'm under the impression that we like snip all of the threads to make it all fluffy after. Or maybe we don't, they're all just loops. I don't know if, like, I don't know if it's like cross stitch where there needs to be some sort of rhyme or reason in the direction that we punch um, or if we just go for it and give her, you know what I mean? I don't know. Okay, maybe this, maybe the instructions will explain it. Okay, hold it away and they're to push the needle through the fabric until it touches the wooden handle of the needle punch. We're gonna need to elevate this. 
in order for this to work. I wonder, so I have a, let's see, let's see. I have a cross stitch um, holder, cross stitch hoop holder. And so I wonder if that would be helpful for this because it seems like we need to have this elevated in some capacity because this is just going to hit the floor. I think that's a JLo song. <laughs> You border and print your way. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It said to follow the numbers in order. for So it looks like we're doing, it's like a paint by numbers almost. And then we do, but judging by that, we then would be doing four. You know what I mean? Like then we would be ending on that. Never needle punch. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, cool. I wonder how much it matters. You know what I mean? Like how much it matters what we punch or how we do it. Hmm. This might be a bit too tall or we just have to, we just have to adjust, adjust the camera. Whoa, you guys are flying high up here. Okay. Let's just see if this works. We're gonna need to open this up a lot more. Okay. While we do that, this is cool. This is the first time I've actually used this on stream. I've, cause we've not needle felted <laughs> since I've received it. So yeah, I assume this will work. <laughs> and then that way we can actually see what we're doing. The only problem is it might be too heavy. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to hold it. That might be problematic. Let's just put, can we put something heavy on it? Let's put this mug, is the mug heavy enough? There we go. The Beetlejuice mug of pens and lip chat. Cool. Okay. So that should work. Because yeah, because we need we need to stab this far enough down so that like so this. So that's that's yeah. It needs to be elevated in some capacity. So we'll do that. Now what? Hold it down, hit the wood handle, carefully pull the yarn out of the fabric, making sure the yarn in the needle can move freely. Keep the needle tip as close to the fabric as you can. Move the needle across by approximately the width of the needle. Okay, so we pull it up and then move it over. Can we not? Are we not expected to like fall? I guess we're not expected to stay in the lines because like immediately my cross stitch brain wants to be like, well, there's crosses. So should we not just follow the holes on the canvas? I'm sure we could, but okay, moving across, punch along the outline of the section. So you're right. So you're right, Chud Chud. It does say here, start with the outline of a section and then fill it in by spiraling in towards the middle. So obviously for the bigger sections, it makes sense. So we outline it and then we fill in and then outline and fill in. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. <laughs> okay. When you've finished a section, Push your needle through the fabric and turn the canvas over so it's loopy side up. Cut off your thread at the same height as your loops and pull out your needle. You do not need to knot the yarn. The loops and fabric will keep the yarn in place. Okay. Repeat steps one through four in each section until the canvas is complete. Once it is complete, tidy the canvas by turning it over so it's loopy side up and trim any long yarn ends so they are all the same length as the loops. You can also use the needle to tease the yarns into place. Okay. <laughs> and you always punch away from you. Yeah, it mentioned to punch in. Yeah, so always keep the hole in the direction you wanna walk away from. So I guess if we're going this way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've been paying attention in their streams. That's very good. Good for you. <laughs> you pass. <laughs> there was no test, but you pass. <laughs> Okay, top tips. If the loops are not staying in the canvas, you're probably pulling the needle out too far. 
Keep the needle in contact with the surface of the fabric as you move along to the next stitch. To fix a loose stitch, carefully pull the yarn at the end of the needle so as not to lose, so as not too loose and punch the stitch through the fabric again and then move on. If you make a mistake, just pull out the yarn and repunch. Okay, that seems simple enough. There's a lot of punch talk going on. <laughs> oh my God, could you imagine? Oh my God. Someone, someone smarter and craftier than me needs to design a Mortal Kombat style game, but it's all different types of crafts. And so our weapons would be various craft supplies, you know? Because it's like, this could be a weapon, but obviously there would be a dramatic Mortal Kombat-y style version of that. And then we could have like, like the knitters would have two and then the crocheters would have two, but they would be hooky versions. Guys, guys. And they could also all be old biddies just to, to make it even awesomer. And we would all be wearing cozy, cozy outfits. No like half naked whatever bullshit that, you know what I mean? Like just all cozy. Some of us are wearing onesies. Some of us are wearing, right? Three, two, one, craft! That's not the Mortal Kombat song, but <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I see like when it comes to show her they're in trouble with me. <laughs> Here, honestly, Kat, if you want to be, you know, if you want to goss, you want to goss, we can, we can be the people that you talk shit to. <laughs> Oop, clipping that. I don't even know if that was a Mortal Kombat song. I don't even know what it was. <laughs> Look, give it a feel. Yeah, honestly. I don't know. To be fair, very exciting. We've actually booked a Street Fighter arcade machine for the reception party, like for the anniversary party we're having. To be fair though, it's not just Street Fighter. It's one of those emulators, but they've put it in a traditional like Street Fighter arcade booth. And we got a Sonic one, cause I think Sonic's cool. <laughs> I guess we need to start and just see how she goes. So what did it say as well? We need to punch, turn the hole away from the direction we want to stitch. So if we're starting with one, we need to... And what I'm wondering as well... <laughs> Let's take a look at this. We're gonna have so many clips for the anniversary party, it's gonna be wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You say it like it's not. Well, it was a nursing home who was calling to pay their past dues, or I thought she was just paying January in this month's bill. She went on about the previous woman who had her job and talked about how she treated everyone like crap and was stealing supplies from the building. Ooh, wow. See, that's ridiculous too, because it's not even like at work. You're just like sitting on the phone having something. You're like, bitch, I just want you to pay your bill so I can go on to the next person. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. That's really silly. Okay. So step one, we will take the yarn. Here, let's move this out of the way a little bit. Or I don't know. Yeah, right? Exactly. You're like, I got a list of people I need to contact. What are you doing? Oh, I have such like, I don't know why. It's so funny when that happens. And sometimes it seems to happen at the most like unopportune moments where people are like, I'm gonna try to have a full ass conversation with you while you're trying to like leave or like finish lunch or do your thing. And you're just like, just leave me alone. Okay, first we must thread. If we let's let's make sure let's make sure let's review what we've learned friends let us review we need to stick the threader into the needle 
Step one. Put the needle through here and leave a five centimeter tail. Exactly. Five centimeters exactly. Uh, let, me, let me measure down here. This is taking up the entire view so you guys can't see me measuring, but trust me, I'm measuring. Five centimeter tail. Okay. Pull through. Realize a little do that. <laughs> Buying webinars for me and we learn all about his family, where he lives. Oh my goodness. That's so funny. To be fair though, like people just love to have a chit chat. Like older people too. Like my Liam's granddad loves to chat with people. My grandpa loves to have a chit chat. Yes. Okay. Five centimeters. Hello. Ooh. I mean, I was gonna, okay. You've already asked me this and I remember I already crushed it, but we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We will have a repeat of my excellent actress naming. Okay. We have Brittany Snow, Anna Kendrick, Anna Camp, uh, Rebel Wilson, Jennifer Lawrence, Margot Robbie, Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Aniston, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Um, shit, that's nine. Let me think of another one. Oh, Zoe Saldana, Elizabeth Olsen, um, Brie Larson, um, Robin Wright Penn, Rachel Lee Cook, Rosario Dawson, Tara Reed, um, Adina Menzel, uh, oh, what's her name? Kristen Bell, Jamila Jamil. I think one more, one more. So many Jennifers. What was the last one? We need one more, guys. Um, 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 oh, Sarah Michelle Geller. Yes, <laughs> I think that was 20. Yes, going through Rent Yeah, did you guys, could you guys catch what movies I was cycling through? <laughs> I did, I transitioned from Josie and the Pussycats to Rent to Frozen. I, I started with, um, uh, oh, what's that, what's the name? Pitch Perfect, started with Pitch Perfect. Kept moving down the line. So yeah, that was the easiest way to do it. So if anybody, if Scooby-Doo pops on your streams and challenges you to name actresses, it's helpful to think of movies. I should have done like the Ocean's Eleven remake with all the girls. That could have been a good one too. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, going through rent. Yes, okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, had two ideas for a joint mainly. Yes, please. Mm-hmm, 100%, send them through. I'll see what I think. Yes, absolutely. I wanted to ask you about them anyway because I wasn't sure if you already had a medley in store or if we were just gonna record all the songs and you were gonna create clips of them and form your own medley. Cause I am also down for both. Like, you know how, I don't know if you guys remember if you've ever seen like infomercials for CDs, like on the PBS channel and they'd be like classic hits of the seventies. And they would cycle through different snippets of them while they're going through it and trying to get you to buy it. I thought maybe that was gonna happen. I'm not gonna think of like a song. <laughs> well, I almost tell you then. You are just not committed, Saul. Yeah, like a compilation album. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if we would be doing something like that, maybe. Okay, we have the five centimeters. Now I think we just have to start stabbing, right? Is that is that just this is all we do? And we have the thing away from where we want to go. And then. I'm so constrict. like, okay. I think we just have to stab it and figure out what we're doing. Whole bunch of needle. So the hole in the neck is facing away from the direction you want to stitch. Push the needle through the fabric until it touches the wooden handle. Okay. So we are going to stab. Here we go. And then what? We just just pull out? That's what she said. Um, God damn it. Okay. And we're outlining, right? Okay. And then 
The hole is away from, but then I'm crossing over, right? Does that matter? Turn it around and pull this, okay. Oh, so I'm supposed to pull the tail through to start. And then, cause this just feels like, okay, okay, one second, one second. Because I'm supposed to thread, oh, you're right. I didn't, I missed one of the steps. I got confused. I forgot to put it through the hole, even though I said I was supposed to. <sighs> Thank you, Chud Chud. Chud Chud is here, doing the most. Tash is out here skipping. The steps needed. Okay, now we push through. And then we pull up. And how 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 long of a loopy do we need? I don't know. And then the width of the needle, that's as far as we're This feels chaotic. I don't know. Like we're just And then the width of the needle. So does it Okay. This doesn't feel, oh, okay. Guys, there's gonna be a lot of jokes like this, I'm sure. My first thing was like, it's in. And I'm like, that's another, that's what she said joke. There's gonna be a lot of that's what she said jokes in this stream. And I'm sorry. It's just, it feels inevitable for what the hell is going on. I'm a bit concerned that I'm not moving this far enough in front. Okay. Yeah, where's the giggity emote? Yeah, geez, where's blonde when you need him? Okay. And then... This is... This is... This is... Is it meant to be... Oh, God damn. I was gonna say, is it meant to be this hard? Listen, I'm sorry. This is just what's what's gonna be happening. And we just need to accept it. <laughs> and you're doing the one yourself, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Is it, is it doing a thing? It looks like it. I don't know. I don't know, guys. It seems to be happening. It's like the Michael Scott meme. It's happening. I don't know. I'm just, uh, just, it's not more difficult. It doesn't myself give us a chance. Yeah, it's true. I'll stop. I'll stop. I will stop. Um, I'll let, I'll let you guys catch up in terms of. Okay. It's just so aggressive. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm worried that it's not. <laughs> Maybe this needs to be sharper. Do we have a sweet? Yes. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Just sound much. I think that's what's gonna happen. We're just gonna, we're just gonna just keep stabbing. Just keep stabbing. See, I love it. Dory's mantra is so versatile. It was all about purling. We were like, just keep purling, just keep, and now it's just keep stabbing. Ah! <laughs> God damn. I think the yelling and the grunting might help. Maybe. I'm not sure. We are not certain. Yeah, don't stab myself. No promises, Chud Chud. No promises. Okay. Shall we shall we see what the hell we're doing? This is this is what's happened so far. I think this is what it's supposed to do. We're making little loopies. That's what it wants. They all relatively look the same size, so I guess it's fine. We're just, just, you know, we're just gonna keep her going and see how she goes. Okay. I 
I'm just, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, good. Excellent, excellent. I think Chet Chet's the only person who's like, I have watched other streamers do this, so I sort of know what's supposed to happen. This is gonna take freaking ages, isn't it? <laughs> Why is this? This is so stupid. I don't know why. I'm like, this is just so ridiculous. Okay. Tip, you shouldn't have to hold the yarn when you're pulling the needle back the canvas. Okay. Oh, okay. It, so it should just be, okay. <clears throat> this is, this is, we, we're doing a trust in the canvas. We're going to trust. And so what I don't know. If it, yeah, thank you, so I appreciate that. Yeah, tea breaks, snack breaks, all the breaks. Um, the thing that I don't understand, and I guess it doesn't matter, right? Is if we're going, like for instance, we have to go in and, and punch these little divots here. But then let's say we get to the end of this line. Do we just pick it up and punch all the way over there and like it shouldn't matter? You know what I mean? So we're gonna have like long bits of yarn on the back, similar to cross stitching where we're gonna do a section and then we're gonna go back over it. I think that should be fine though, right? Like that's how this works. Oh, okay, you cut it and restart the other spot. Interesting, interesting. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So maybe what we do is we fill in this section, then we cut, and then we start again, and then we... Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's so funny, because this kit, actually, it wasn't one of my Christmas presents. It was Liam's aunt who uh, picked this up and then was like... I thought I would pick myself up a craft kit, um, but I don't think I'm ever gonna do it. Would you like to? And I cannot imagine her making this. I don't know if uh, that's shitty of me, <laughs> but I can't imagine her working her way through this. Uh, it would have been a fun, it would have been a fun thing though. It would have been fun. Okay, no, I don't think that's gonna work because now this is like filled in we need to fill this section in but this is now a straight line so i think go all the way up and then do the back and forth thing maybe i don't know i'm not sure or you could like do thicker lines so punch one way and then make your way back the other way yeah yeah no exactly you have to punch through yeah, you can't like punch through the same thing because there is some sections here that need to be punched. Yeah. I think we just have to do like a second line and just kind of end it here because it's kind of like going inside like this. Yeah. That's what I, I think the way it seems to have said is with the sections, we're supposed to do an outline and then fill it in sort of like in a circular sense, which will totally work for these bigger sections and leaves. But this part here is just lines. Like these are just accent lines. So there really isn't anywhere to go. Um, so it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Um, so it's more just for this stuff to start. So I guess what we'll do is we will, ooh. Get in the hole. <laughs> this is so aggressive because you're actively like tearing the fibers of the canvas. Who thought of this craft? How long has this craft been a thing? seems archaic and it seems rude 
I feel like we're ruining perfectly good canvas with our stabbing. <laughs> Rug makers. Oh yeah, I guess so, eh? That's kind of what this is. It does, it does look, it is, it seems fun. I, I don't know. To be fair, I think it's fun in the sense that it's pretty mindless that I'm just like stabbing shit in a circle. This is, the, you know what this is? This is kind of like combining needle felting and cross stitching for me because I'm stabbing it, but I'm also stabbing in an intricate pattern instead of like willy nilly like I do when I needle felt. So yeah, exactly. Rug makers, the makers of rug rats. Do, 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 do. Honestly, like when you really think about it for a children's theme song to just be um, like a, t a tone with no words and for it to slap that hard, it's pretty impressive. Okay, so what you're suggesting Chud Chud is now we've reached the end of this line. So we should effectively take the tail out and like cut it like here. Yeah, cool. Where's my scissors? And so I'm assuming like similarly to this, we should leave like a little bit of a tail, right? And then we can like get closer to it. Make sure the yarn is um, when you finish the section, pull the needle through the canvas so the loopy side is up. Oh, we're supposed to cut it from the inside. Oh, well now I've made the line too long. It's fine, we'll make it a little longer just for the sake of it. <laughs> okay, so now we flip it over. There we go, look at that. Sort of, kind of, maybe, right? And then we cut the thread at the same height as the loop. Okay. There. And then I guess we just pull her out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the other side. Yeah, like that. Okay. Well, shit. <laughs> our, our first, our first punches. Okay, let's keep her going. I do think I may have punched too close together here, but it's fine. Looks like a glow worm. It does, it does look like a glow worm. Okay, we need another five centimeters. Okay. And I do think we need to make this section a little chonkier here without felting in the same places that we did earlier. So it's unlike, it's not like cross stitch in the sense that you can't go back and stab in the same place. There needs to be canvas fibers separating. That is helpful to know. Cool. I have to go into Lurky Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope your errand running goes well. I hope it is successful. Thank you so much for giving all your tips and tricks, Chud Chud. I appreciate it. I think you've set us off in a good in a good standing. So we're gonna we're gonna make shit happen now. I really do need to set myself a fun little lurk message. I've been thinking about that. Everyone has such interesting, cool ones. It's super cold. Oh no! Yeah, that's true. I forget. You're you're in you're in Canada. Shit's still very cold where you are. <laughs> okay. So I think that has sort of filled in what we wanted to. So then we just do a snip snip here. 
No. Oh, see, I don't miss that one bit. I never, ever want to have to experience negative again. Negative 42 overnight. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. It's a chunky little glow worm. Alrighty then. Back in the five centimeters. And then we are going in... We want the hoop to go away from the stitching direction. So because we are now going this way, we are now. <laughs> there we go. Why is this so stressful? It's fine though. We just need, I don't know. It's like, because you have to put so much force behind it to make it happen. I'm like really paranoid about making sure this all lines up, but it also seems like there's very little rhyme or reason to it. So I guess we just go for it and hope for the best. I'm freezing and let's see, it's for Oh no. Yeah, I don't even know what the temperature is here right now. I think it's like nine degrees Celsius. Oh, it's actually 13 degrees Celsius. So what's 13 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit? So it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 55.4. Yeah, so it's cold as balls then. If this is 55.4 and it's 30, that means shit's cold where you are. <laughs> right, let's see 30 Fahrenheit in Celsius. 30 degrees. Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yeah, it's minus one. Yeah. Mm hmm. No, absolutely. Where is it where you were? 39. Yeah. Mm hmm. Y'all are cold. Hold. Honestly, too, though, I also find as well that like my appendages, especially if I'm working on a computer and stuff, they do get really chilly. So I definitely, yeah. Gloves while on the computer, even when it's warm out sometimes. I think it's like a circulation thing sometimes. <laughs> some of the areas obviously are like in the center of the stitches and some of them are at the end 12 here yeah yeah definitely yeah so you i will get one degree colder or you will get one degree warmer in the next 30 minutes we'll see who it is to be fair, mine was just a Google one. So if you have like an actual temperature gauge near you, then maybe yours is a bit more. There we go. <laughs> My apartment is also janky. Ooh, yeah, I hate that. I lived in an apartment like that too, where you weren't in control of the heat. It was like the building. Yours is the windows one. Oh, okay. are you but you hate being cold what's that about <laughs> oh you're moving at the end of the month that's amazing that should hopefully okay and then we sneaky snip this little section here i have no idea how this is gonna turn out I assume it's gonna be fine though. And everything's gonna get filled in. I don't know, we're just not, you just hate wearing shoes, that's fair. Yeah, five minutes down the road. You have slippers at work, yeah, that's cool. That's a fair, that's a fair statement. Especially if like shoes, it's really, I know I'm really picky about my shoes. I have a really hard time like finding ones that really work. Oh, that's amazing. Should two going right now. Oh. When is the, um, I think you had mentioned this. Is there an official date for the um, bone marrow transplant? Um, or I wasn't sure if that was still being geared up or if there was an official date for that yet. Oh, down the road, but that's amazing. The eighth, okay. 
the eighth of this month. Wow. All the fingers and toes crossed that it goes well. That's amazing Meg, that you're actually gonna get a little housey house. Just four days of two different chemos, then a rest day, then oh my God. She's gonna be so tired. Honestly, your mom's a superhero going through all of that. Jeez. Good for her though, for, you know. Damn. Oh, no, no, I didn't want to stab there. Cause I think that's already been stabbed. So we need to stab adjacent to it. <gasps> yeah, she was really tired last night. Yeah. I guess cause is, I don't know. It was like getting chemo, like the actual treatment. I assume if it's like IVs and stuff, there could be pain associated with that. So I guess is the medication just to help with like pain like coping or okay. Mm. Just... Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's weird then. Yeah, I would want, I wonder why they would be like, oh, you need you need help sleeping. Unless she says she's having trouble sleeping, but I feel like you would know that if she was. She's really too sticking on my front chest. Ooh. Eh. Yeah, it must be difficult. Yeah. Actually, guys, you know what I was just thinking? Um, if we have a bunch of yarn left over from this, though I'm pretty sure this is much thinner yarn than the snood yarn, we could then knit some sort of random ass yarn conglomeration with all the leftovers. Get the same missy family members her. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's almost like an empathy, especially too, because I think, you know, you've mentioned a lot. I think you and your mom are very close. So to have to see and go through all of that, I feel like you almost get like sympathy or empathy like pains. You know what I mean? It's difficult. But also I know you're, you know, you want to be able to support her because I know you're taking time off and things to be there for her and stuff. So it's, it's a difficult situation, right? It's a similar thing we were talking about yesterday when you have like the empathy piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You're like, you know, it's like the physical help as well as like the support, like the moral support help, right? So I'm sure your grandma can help with the the mental support, but if she's not really capable of doing the physical support, then that can be difficult. Hopefully this is all, they're roughly looking like they're the same height. I don't know. Hi, Pete. Good afternoon. How are you doing? We are punching today oh uh, mm, maybe so okay so maybe not maybe not the most helpful in terms of uh empathetic support then fair enough she's just physically there to be there <laughs> fair fair yep interesting interesting yeah Is she the kind of person who like would make the fact that your mom has cancer all about her? I wanna make sure I don't accidentally eat this cup off of here. Cause I definitely know people like that where it's like your pain things. Oh yes, you have mentioned that she's very judgmental in that respect. No, that's your cousin. Right, right, right. Okay. Oh, 
What a weird, what a weird thing to do. Right, because she was going through such a hard time. That's silly. Silly gooses. Okay, come on. There we go. I don't want that to, okay. Now they're gonna do a Oh, got to treat yourself. Got some fresh donuts. Ooh. Yes, please. Yeah. Ooh, that's gonna be amazing. I wanna see. Geez, it sounds like you are starting tea party celebrations early. Though there's never a bad time to have a tea party. There we go. This is this is this is looking like something. Sort of, kind of, maybe. Though these ones look a little... I think I might have stabbed through the same things too many times. I don't know. I don't know how you don't do that. I don't know how you don't accidentally stab. I guess that's why it's so fluffy, so that it doesn't matter. Okay. Yes, pot of tea, cup and saucers. <laughs> That's amazing. What kind of donut is it? It looks decadent. It looks bougie, Pete. But we are doing, yeah, me and Shadow are doing well. Shadow is being a little bit of a diva. You're feeling more British with your teapot. Absolutely. Peak British. Peak British tea time. But yeah, Shadow and I for our morning um, W. We went for a decent one, but I was like, I got shit to do today. We don't have time to go on like big epic adventures. And so at one point we were on our way back near. And so it's like near the field that we've been to a couple of times, but it's only, we've only been there a couple of times. So we we're going back and he full on stopped and was like, I would like to go a different way. And I was like, absolutely not Shadow. We need to go home. And so we have one of those extendable leads. So he's fully at one end of the sidewalk and I'm fully extended like a good 10 feet away from him being like, dude, we need to go. And he's like, I don't want to. And I'm like, get your ass up here to the point where there's an elderly man across the street on the opposite sidewalk who just started laughing at us. And he was like, oh, I thought you were teaching him like off lead walking. And I was like, nah, he's just being in pain and refusing to move forward because he wants to go to the field and I won't let him. To the point where I had to go and grab, like, because uh, his harness has, like, a little handle on it. So I had to go and grab him by the harness and, like, make him move forward. So I'm like, I will drag your 25 kilo ass back to the house if you don't smarten up. So sometimes you can get away with it if he's, like, lolling behind you can yell ready steady go and pretend to run away and then he'll run after you and then you can be like yeah come on we're going this way but if he's already fully extended himself then it doesn't work so yeah i was having like a full-on standoff like he was doing a proper ta yeah honestly like but mom like literally proper toddler temper tantrum terrible twos Shadow was doing. He was like being stroppy. And I was like, listen, Tasha needs to try to be an adult today. I have to make phone calls. We need to get home so I can mentally prepare myself for this. So yeah, but then he was fine when we got back. It was all good. <laughs> Raspberry to have a jam on it. So Ooh. Those all sound incredible. Those all sound like incredible options. I think I keep punching in the same hole. I think I need to move over more. I'm like worried that if I don't put them close enough, they're gonna look really far apart, but I guess it's not, like they're so fluffy that I guess it shouldn't, I don't know, that won't happen. This is not going in a straight line. Oh no, I guess it kind of is. I just need to adjust it afterwards. I'm like, this looks janky as fudge, but it's fine. I just need to trust the process, you know? Much like needle felting. I just need to trust the process. 
process. <laughs> Got some loosely tried. Ooh! Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, that's true. That's what I'm thinking. The other colors will, will smarten them up. They will help them get information. What does this look like now? Is it still a glow worm? What are, what are we thinking? It looks like a dancing string bean. It's like, what is it? It looks like this, like this. It looks like a dancing string bean, which again, I'm not mad about. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it does. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, the little dude. Yeah, the like stick bug creature. <laughs> Team Chai! Yeah, you guys will have to let me know. Obviously, you guys already have your your assignments, but anyone in, who's in our Discord um, who wants to be in the uh, <laughs> assigned a T. You have a bendable version of that. Oh, do you? Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, I gotta add. You know what it was? I actually specifically, when I was trying to pick a green tea version, I specifically put the Gen Micha for potato because when we were talking about the different teas we liked, she had mentioned that she liked the, like the roasted, the rice one, the green tea with like the toasted rice. So I knew it had a specific name. I didn't want to put like toasted rice green tea. Um, but yeah, I knew it was called something. So I looked it up to make sure because I wasn't sure if I was going to do jasmine tea or a different kind of tea. But I was like, I remember people have talked about that they talked that they like this particular type of tea. So I want to make that one of the options. And so just to let you know, you are in the chamomile team. That is the yellow team. Chamomile crew. <laughs> so you can chamomile hype. <laughs> okay. We're gonna continue. Should probably continue on this little guy. This is another one of those fascinating crafts that I don't really, like it blows my mind how this works. I guess this is similar. <laughs> Why? Jeez. Oh, Why? <laughs> um, God. Okay. Sounds like something I'm on a mission to convert people to chai. <laughs> yeah. No. It's what everyone's faves are. I should actually try to track down all of the different ones. I think I actually, no, I have versions, but I should pick up like all of the different types for the tea party so that everyone feels represented. I have enough teapots. I don't know if I'll be able to consume six different types of tea in teapot form, um, but I do have them all. So we can, you know, make sure that everyone feels included. I was lurking. <laughs> ah, that's really cute. Oh, that's amazing, Pete. Were you able to get it some seeds? I know my, uh, my um, partner's grandma um, 
she's associated with owls. So anytime anyone sees an owl or any like owl iconography, it reminds them of her. Um, excuse me, Pretzel Rocks, where did the tombs go? It's tea time. <laughs> Yennefer, yes it is. Thank you very much for the tea reminder. Uh, what am I drinking? I'm trying to remember. Ooh, I'm drinking Glow from Twinings. It's a green tea with cucumber, strawberry, and aloe. And like, I've mentioned this before, guys. I don't know why I love this so much, because usually... Fruity teas, I prefer iced, but this one's just so ding dang good. Mind you, this is cold now, so it's kind of iced. I have a need to get a bird feeder. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be really cute. I know we have one. It's not filled with anything. It was like when we moved into our house, we just inherited a bunch of stuff from the previous owner. And one of the things she has is like this glass. It's a bird feed holder. I think you're meant to put like little grubs and stuff in it, but it's clear and it suction cups to the window. So the idea is that you'd be able to see the birds eating the bird feed and stuff like uh, directly attached to the window. So, but we've never taken the time. If, if anything, it was still full of like little bugs and stuff when we moved in. So I cleared it out one day and we've just never filled it. Cause I guess certain types of birds like certain types of food, right? So I think she was like the woman who was in the house before us was quite good at like, different types of bird foods and things for the different types of birds in the area. But that's one thing I don't have a lot of knowledge about. Okay. Let us continue on our punching journey. That sounds really aggressive and that's cause it is. <laughs> I think what's gonna happen, I don't know the best way to hold this because I'm holding it like a pen and I'm pushing a lot of pressure on this knuckle, but it's like just to have more, maybe I need to, yeah, hold it differently. I don't know. I'm sure by the end of this, we will finesse. I'm curious to see, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly guys, the grunting helps. The grunting helps because it gives me strength. There we go. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see how far we get on this because, oh, dear God, there we go. Yeah. Cause we're almost, well, yeah, we're almost on this, the, this center part. And then we will move on to section two, which is this internal section. And then it's the external part. Use the big muscles. Yeah, honestly. Let's use them. Use all of the muscles. There we go. Um, yeah. I'm intrigued because certain sections are labeled like this whole thing is number three, but this is four, which is the border. So I'm guessing that this is gonna actually have a bit of a gap here. I don't know. Oh no, no, I'm seeing it now. Okay, it's like Swiss, it's like the cheese part. Gotcha, gotcha. Cause it's also backwards and upside down. Cause I was like, what is it doing? I just need to follow the instructions and it will be fine. <laughs> okay. It's a good thing I had this um, cross stitch stand just because I don't know um, how I would have held this to punch through. 
without it. So that's helpful. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five lines left to do. Or I guess like one, two, three, yeah, five. Okay, interesting. Here's what we've got going on right now. I think we are obviously doing this correctly. This is obviously, I just don't want this to fall. Are you not entertained? Okay. Okay. Now, again, away from where we're stabbing. Ugh. So after this, we only have one more craft kit to do, and that is our embroidery project. So I think a lot of the components that are happening right now will play into that, because I'm pretty sure, again, with embroidery, it will have a pattern drawn on canvas. We will be using this apparatus to hold it in place. <laughs> Are you, do you think we need a break, Pete? Is that what you're telling me? Is it karaoke time? What are we in the mood for? What 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 sort of jam shall we shall we uh, listen to today? Or what what shall you like me to perform? Now we are in oh, living la vida loca. Wow. Wow, that brings me back. Have I not told you that Ricky Martin was one of my first childhood crushes? This is gonna, yep. Wow, we are, we are kicking it old school. I'm excited. We are gonna get Moy Caliente up in this part, up in this bitch. Okay, <laughs> let us, let us prepare. Same cat. Yep, Lance Bass. And you know what's really funny? And it sounds really dumb, but I joke that I inherited it from my mom because her two main childhood crushes were Freddie Mercury from Queen and George Michael. And mine were Ricky Martin and Lance Bass. We're like the, generationally the same person. It's the same shit, different generations. Yeah, Lance Bass was my go-to Backstreet, or not Backstreet Boy, wow, sacrilegious. My, my go-to in sync. Live in la vida loca. Okay. Oh, it's got it. It's got it. I'll pause this. <laughs> I'm a fan. I know, right? Honestly, you should be. I'm sorry. I need to hang up my 90s baby sentimentality. How dare I mix up? our founding boy band fathers. Oh, you're back just in time. <laughs> All right, okay, let's drink some tea. Let's, let's move this out of the way. Let's get the full orientation. Let's, let's do this, okay. Drink more tea. Let's turn this up. Mute this while the ads play. Crank this up. And hopefully my rendition of this will help us redeem. Okay, hopefully this is loud enough. You gotta let me know if I need to change it. She's into superstitions, black cats and voodoo dolls. I feel a premonition, that girl's gonna make me fall. She's 
she's into new sensations, new kicks in the candlelight. She's got a new addiction for every day and night. She'll make you take your clothes off and go dancing in the rain. She'll make you live her crazy life, but she'll take away your pain. Like a bullet to your brain, come on, upside, inside out. She's living la vida loca. She'll push and pull you down, living la vida loca. Her lips are devil red and her skin's the color mocha. She will wear you out, living la vida loca. Living la vida loca. She's living la vida loca. I feel like I'm singing it like an octave lower. I don't know. It's a dude pitch, so we'll see. It's sounding okay though, so it's fine. We'll keep going. Ready for this? Woke up in New York City in a funky cheap hotel. She took my heart and she took my money. She must have slipped me a sleeping pill. She never drinks the water, makes you order French champagne. Once you've had a taste of her, you'll never be the same. Yeah, she'll make you go insane. All right, upside, inside out. She's living la vida loca. She'll push and pull you down, living la vida loca. Your lips are devil red and the skin's the color mocha. She will wear you out, living la vida loca. Living la vida loca. She's living la vida loca. <laughs> She'll make you take her clothes off and go dancing in the rain. She'll make you live her crazy life, but she'll take away your pain. Like a bullet to your brain, come on, upside, inside out. She's living la vida loca. She'll push and pull you down, living la vida loca. Her lips are devil red and her skin's the color mocha. She will wear you out, living la vida loca. She's living la vida loca. She's living la vida loca. Come on! <laughs> gotta la vida loca. Gotta, gotta, gotta la vida loca. Thank you for that, Pete. That was good fun. That was good fun. I didn't expect to be singing that an octave lower than it was, but that's the way the cookie crumbled. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you very much for that, Pete. Oh, that's so funny, Kat. I saw that. You're like, someone always calls me when this happens. <laughs> Ha, oh, that was good. That was good. We needed that, guys. We needed a break from from punching. <laughs> we needed a punch break and that was excellent. That was good. That was peak. <laughs> mhm. Mm yeah, love me some Ricky Martin. All right, let's go back to the overlays. Oh, yeah. so With Expedia, you can save. Oh, I was like, what the hell's going on? It's an ad. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's get back out of here. I was like, why is there talking? I know sometimes Pretzel Rocks likes to throw talking in there. Um, but brought it back. Just place my lunch hour. <laughs> You're too excited. Yeah, you get to leave early. You get to leave early. You think it was better than the original. Ah, stop it. You just like to butter me up. <laughs> No, that was good fun. That was good fun. I told you guys, any 90s, early 2000s bops that I know, we're gonna have fun. <laughs> it's gonna be a good time. All right, let us continue to punch. It's good. We, we have now, we are now 
full of, we are now freshly invigorated and ready to keep punching. <laughs> Very good. I might have to go through, this will be a, a side project, would be to take the, the, uh, the karaoke moments from the VODs and place them, place them. Um, into their own playlist in case people, in case people care to listen specifically to Nostalgia Tash karaoke content. We <laughs> just have another party song. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Very good. Yes, we will have, we have, we have three, three karaoke's a day, but yes, for the party, I have promised unlimited karaokeing. And there might be, well, not there might be, there, there is a chance. Because, guys, it is also Saul's um, affiliate anniversary on the 16th. We're a year apart. We're a year apart. We're like Twitch, Twitch siblings. What? Affiliate siblings? I don't know. What's that called? Anyway, basically what I'm saying is Saul and I might do a wonderful um, duet for you all. Um as well to be unveiled at the tea party which i'm very excited about as well so you will get unplanned karaoke moments and planned karaoke moments half wonderful yeah <laughs> no it's gonna be so wonderful full wonder Urgh. twitch twins there we go meg thank you so much i was like i'm sure there's a term I'm sure there's a term. <laughs> we are Twitch twins. Crafting in a show, yep. What a good start to the weekend. We try, I try. I try to send you all off to, to have a good start to the things. But yes guys, if you're not already, which I don't understand why you wouldn't be, you need to give our good friend, our good buddy, a follow. Because we have such good fun together. And so if you have fun over here, you will have fun over there as well. Well, I just made that up on the spot. <laughs> you did, yeah, honestly though, clearly, you know, your brain, your brain, you've not turned off your brain for the weekend. So it's good. I like that though, Twitch twins. I think sometimes, isn't there that thing where like siblings that are born like a year apart that are really close, they're called like Irish twins or something like that. So I don't know, I like Twitch twins. We be Twitch twins. Okay, we keep going. Urgh. What else you, oh wow, the punch thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, this needle punch thing, I have never ever, it's, it's honestly chaotic. I'm, you know, I'm not into, <laughs> it's one of those, we're, we're not entirely sure if we're doing it correctly, but we are creating little loops. So that's really all we can ask of it. This, you know, I've never, this is our, our first time using it. This is, guys, you are witnessing the dawning of Tasha's first ever attempt at needle punching. So, I don't know. But I feel like I've seen this apparatus before. Just never. What term? Oh, when people are Irish twins, the poor director oh, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, yeah, I think it's like when, when kids are born maybe within the same, like, you know when people, cause it's a nine month thing, if they're like within the sort of a few month span. Ugh, right? So that, that was kind of the idea. The only problem with this is I think sometimes it requires a bit more elbow grease than I have to give. <laughs> Urgh. 
but yes. <laughs> it feels, I don't know, it looks like magic. It feels like finger pain. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, no problem. Yeah, no, it's all good. There must be, I'm sure there's like, there must be, I think there's like mechanical versions. Yeah. There's gotta be mechanical versions of this. Like automated ones that like, like punch, I don't know, like mechanically for you. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. We have a few here. So this is, whoa, put this, put this shit back on here. Yeah. This is sort of, here, here's some, you can't really see them, but this is sort of the thing where you thread it through here and then you take it and you stab it and then you just pull it out. And then apparently the tension is enough to help create little balls or little loopies and then you just keep going. Go and it's like, it's a self-feeding thing. Allegedly, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they're both forms in the same year. There is handheld ones you can buy. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You would stab a silver. Probably, honestly, I, I'm glad I didn't. I have not. I think, I don't know if it would be full stabbage, like w with the needle felting, but I think it would still be very uncomfortable. So I'd like to avoid that. Why Irish though? Yeah, I just, I don't know. Maybe that happened a lot in Ireland. I'm sure it happened a lot everywhere, but maybe they were just there to coin the term. It's like an origin thing. Okay, let us pop this over here and continue with the stabbing. From Irish mother, yeah. Ah, uh, so so it was meant. I think it's cut. Mm. Maybe it was low key meant to be like an insult. So maybe it's actually not um, appropriate to say. You know what I mean? Like maybe that's actually kind of low key offensive. So it was meant to belittle someone for not having access to contraceptives. Look at that guys, we're learning. We are learning the origins of words and the history behind them. Mrs. Bullshit loves that stuff too. Don't know. Yeah, definitely. Terms definitely do change. That's interesting though, cause yeah, Aurora learned about it in an antenatal class. Lady Eve was Irish too, yeah, so maybe it's just like a colloquial thing. Yeah. That's interesting. It's good, if Mrs. Bullshit's still lurking, she loves the origins of words and stuff too, so I'm sure she thoroughly enjoyed this moment. Okay, are we are we done the first section? Look at this, all this yarn, guys. We are definitely making some sort of knitted conglomeration at the end of all of this. I do think that this is a different thickness though than what we did to make the snood. It's more stereotyping like, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like a generalization. That's fair. It's one of those things like as long as people are in on the joke and they laugh at it, then it's okay. You know what I mean? Cause I think it's like one of those where sometimes you can say something and people will be like, that's fine. But then other people might not, right? So you just gotta know who you can and can't say shit in front of. So that's all right. Yeah. 
Okay. Is that, was that that simple? Did we, so here is all of numero uno. So we have now created the stem of the leaf, like the, the inside fibrous part of the cheese plant. And now we shall move on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If the negative connotations are removed by that, then that's a good thing. As long as there aren't still people, because I feel like it's always that fine line, right? Where I think with certain things, I'm sure like it's good, but then other times people are like, no, it actually, there's certain groups of people that still remember the origin. It's one thing if the collective society completely forgets the origin and decides it's no longer relevant. But if there's still a group of people that are like, no, actually that was extremely hurtful for me and the people that I grew up around, we would be like, so you still are being hurt by actively by this. So maybe not a good idea. But if people are no longer actively being hurt by that statement, then like you said, it sort of entered cultural zeitgeist as being more of a humorous thing to poke fun of as opposed to something that actively is used to undermine and make people feel terrible about themselves. Because we don't want that. We don't want anyone feeling shitty over here. None of that, please. Okay. On to the next. On to numero dos. Which is this color here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So as long as it's as long as it's a thing, if the culture that it's poking fun of sort of like for the most part collectively agrees it's a thing, then it's fine. I would assume. But then if someone came around and was like, no, no, that's only okay. Or like with certain groups, it's only okay if we say it. It's like, you know what I mean? Like you can talk shit about I can talk shit about my brother, but you cannot talk shit about my brother. You know, it could be one of those situations. But as long as it's not, fair game. Mine would look like spaghetti dish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that, I, I do think there are maybe some sections that we might have put too close together. So they actually are probably chonkier than we want them to be. This is true, yeah. It's the collective. I would say if more than 10%, is offended or upset by it, then it's a thing, right? I don't know, maybe. Fine balance. <laughs> okay, now no, no, numero dos. Hopefully. Okay, so this section now I have to make sure we keep track of all the floofies. Is we're meant to outline it and then continue. But there are, so now I'm wondering, like, is this whole thing a section or have we now sectioned it off because we've cut some of these pieces in half? So now this is a quadrant and so we should cut accordingly and fill in the sections that way. I'm not sure. Probably cut them? Or do we just needle punch and then just like, like boop over? I think the booping over might be a problem though because the, the instructions mention how you need to sort of keep this as close to the canvas as possible. So I guess moving over actually would disrupt it. So we probably just have to make more cuts. So there's gonna be a lot more phalanges back here. We can probably make these a little bit smaller just because apparently if we've done this correctly, everything is taut and so it should be fine. So we'll do that now just so that it'll be easier to see what we're doing. Like I said, once we do this, we have an embroidery project and then we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming 
in terms of needle felting and cross stitching and maybe more bead weaving. We will see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it helps to stay vigilant, but also, you know, be aware. Be aware, stay safe. This way. I would recommend a beaded S dragon kit. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. What? <laughs> beaded dragon kit. Wow. That sounds like it would be difficult, maybe. <laughs> Is that what we do now? We just do kits on this channel now. Guys, I don't have enough room to keep doing kits. I do, I would love to do kits, but you know, all of my cross stitching is staring at me on the wall being like, bitch, what about us? <laughs> so I think we do need to, maybe what happens is we decide to challenge ourselves and we go, we will finish a thing that is like, you know, one of our whips we will finish and then we can treat ourselves to another kit. Okay. So, I do think these are now individual sections, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but it's fine. Yeah, right? Finish a thing, then a kit. You know, like a little treat, like a little celebratory snack, you know? <laughs> Okay, so we are meant to, oh, we gotta put the thing through the thing. Cross stitching is so 2020, <laughs> Pete! <laughs> oh, you guys, terrible influences, terrible influences. We have one more, to be fair. I don't know, we'll see. More, more kits may end up happening. They will, they will at some point. Take a break, have a kit kit. <laughs> give me a break, give me a break of that kit kit. Oh, woo! I'm combining things now. Okay. So we are now meant to make circles, or at least make outlines, and then fill them in. Oops. I'm accidentally making too big of stitches I feel. No, we're absolutely pushing stuff out of the way. Hmm. Hmm. I think this is where it gets, I think I'm underestimating how big this is and so I don't need to stress so much about trying to like line it up perfectly because it seems like it's just gonna, I don't know. It takes up more space than I think it will. Oh, shit. We just go back through here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I definitely worry that we're gonna punch I'm gonna punch too close to the sun. I don't know. There we go. Like there's gonna be gaps, but maybe that's fine. I don't know. I don't know. Like there maybe should have been another one there, but it's too late now. So it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Hi Kay, good morning. It is, it's going well, I think. I think it's going fine. Um, I'm a bit, concerned now that we're like filling stuff in. It's a fine balance between like lining shit up and not stabbing too close to the other stabs, which is totally counterintuitive to cross stitching where you need to um, stab close together and even on top of each other sometimes. Whereas here, 
it seems to need to be a certain distance away so that all of the fibers don't like fall out of each other if that makes sense so as of right now i'm not sure but we have faith we have faith how how are things on your end has it stopped freezing raining where you are i can't see with these floofs you had a goat knitting on chopsticks that's incredible aurora i love that i love that yeah my goal is to inspire you all to go on these zany adventures for yourself i should do a slip knot cast line do a road knitting Pros the wool wasn't the best so it unraveled at all that's really good though i like that i like that see our our big goal is to get Saul to take on a craft I don't know. Have you ever crafted, Saul? I feel like, you know, the ultimate goal is to get you crafting. <laughs> that is that is my goal. That is my want. <laughs> okay. So we are... Next stream collab, could you imagine? Yeah. To be fair, I've done a collab on Saul's stream. We'll have to figure out. I've never done a collab on here before. Um, I'm always so excited and happy to be invited to other people's streams. But yeah, maybe, maybe the year of 2023, we also attempt collab streams. We'll have to, we'll have to workshop Saul after, after our joint Twitch anniversary. We'll have to think of something. <laughs> of course I do. Always. <laughs> uh, I've painted a bit, but I do have a show called Art. Yes. For oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm down to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on all the handmade crafts you can be given for your birthday that once done you can give to me. Honestly, guys, it's so true though. I will do that. If you have things you're like, I would like this, but I don't want to make it, give it to me to make, please. Because I will do that. Gotta sneak away. Yes, go practice your ABBA. Absolutely. Yes, and we'll chat more about that. I'm actually so excited. We, we, have, we have connections to make. Enjoy your stream. I'll talk to you later, you fabulous human being. But yeah, that's what my mom used to always get happen to her as well. But like, I don't mind that. It would be like people would be like, oh, can you knit this thing for me? Or no, can you sew this thing for me? But guys, if you buy me craft kits, that just gives me content. And then I can just give it back to you. <laughs> so send you an Etsy link. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. To be fair, odd. The only thing that's annoying. So I, I did make a, I did make a cross stitch for my friend Jazzy, good friend Jazzy May, um, and I have sent it to her. It is done, but because of the cyber attacks that happened here via the Royal Mail, it's like still at the post office, and I sent it at the beginning of the month. I not this month. I sent it in January. So hopefully it can get to her before she goes to Thailand on holiday. But yeah, if it's not a massive project, Pete, not being funny, like if you send me the link, these are looking real fluffy. What am I doing? I hope I'm not fucking it up. I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, if it's not too big, if it's like smaller than this, if it's like, let me, let me get a hoop. Let me get a hoop and show ya. If it's like this size, the size of my face. How big is that? Mm, where'd I put my ruler? Let's see. Yeah, like like a 16 centimeter job. I'll make it for you. I will, I will. Watch, all, all my cross stitches are mad at me. They're like, you will what? You will start another project and not finish any of your other ones? Shut up, we'll get to you eventually. <laughs> oh shit. 
I always forget when we get to the end that I have to leave the thing in here. That's the part I keep forgetting. And then I pull it up and I'm like, crap. Actually, we can probably fit another one in maybe. I don't know. Ah, I fucked it up. No, I fucked it up. Maybe? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Have a good weekend, Kat. I will see you later. Enjoy, enjoy. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a good weekend. You're the best. Yeah, these are, I don't know, guys. This is, this is now, this is now, I don't know. Are we, are we entering the wonky self-doubt phase? Maybe. Because now it like pops out. I'm sure it's fine. I don't know. I don't know. I assume there's not meant to be gaps. But it's kind of popping out. But maybe we just, I don't know. We just keep going. I'm not sure. It looks like the thing. It's just, you know. I don't know. Let, let's just keep going. Yeah, see, this is, it's like puckering out. And so I don't know if that's because I'm, again, putting them too close together, not close together enough. Who knows? But we will just keep going. I don't know if this is too close together, not close together enough. I feel like as long as the fibers are holding it in place, it should be fine. Cause then, yeah, I don't know. And then this is not looking like a, I don't know. I don't know. It's fine, we'll keep going. We'll keep going, it'll be fine. I think, I hope. <laughs> I also can't really see what I'm doing in the sections that we've like cut off. <laughs> this is, hmm, I don't know, is it fine? No, these, these are, okay. Just, just need to floof them out a bit more there. I assume I'm not, okay, that's looking better. These guys were looking a little not so good, but these ones are, we're back on track, I think, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, cause this looks like a mess. I don't know. I just feel like we're just destroying this canvas. So I don't know how we fix it if, we have like made too big of a hole. I just think that's it. I think that's just, you know. That is our mess and we must lie in it. So I'm gonna cut this cause I think we've made it to the end of this section, even though, again, I don't know. So like this, 
can you manipulate the fibers? Like, can we go in and kind of like smoosh and manipulate these to look different than they are? Or do we just keep going and hope for the best? I assume it's the latter, but. Hmm, okay. And now we need to fill this section in. Maybe we do need to clip these to be even smaller. This might be a risk, but I'm just hoping that we can still see what we're doing afterwards. Because right now, I cannot. And then this, I don't know what happened here. We definitely pulled some strands. Like these I don't think should exist. There's like real big loopies on the back, which I don't think we should have, but we're just gonna keep going. Yes, like what do I do in moments like this when this clearly needs a, a stab? But then these ones, see now this is, I think, I don't know if there's any fibers left holding on to this. Hmm. Okay. It, it looks like it did a thing though, so I guess. This is where all the self doubt kicks in. Some of these go in a lot easier than others. And then part of me panics because I feel like it's because we've made too big of a, like we've, we've scrunched, we've cut too many threads maybe. That's what I'm thinking. And that's why it's so simple to punch through, but maybe it's not. I don't know. And then that one was really easy. So then I'm like, oh shit, did we, Butcher another section. How close are these supposed to go together? It said the length of this thing, but it's like, I feel like that's what I'm doing. I don't know. Or it's like I'm doing the length of this thing when I'm moving it, but then I'm interacting with other loops outside of that or closer to that than, see, cause then all of this, but then I guess when it all pulls in, cause this looks like there's hella gaps, but maybe once you pull this all together like that, it shouldn't, cause like this, when it's all poofed out, there's like a huge bit of like white space here. And so I don't know if that is only cause it's puffed out. And once I kind of push it down, then you don't see that as much, I guess. You can't even really see. I guess it's fine because you guys can't see on the camera what's happening. I'm dropping all the crap out of my cup. So like, why is it poofing out like this? And if it does poof out, 
So like this, it's fine. Like this, it's not fine. I don't know. Again, we don't know. This is also much heavier than a cross stitch project. So I think that explains why this is not supporting itself. Okay. Let's put you guys back up here so it's easier to see everything. Let's cut these a little smaller. This, it's very strange. This is going by very quickly. What time is it? Yeah. I feel like we've done a lot. There we go. Yeah, there's definitely, I don't know. Maybe by the time we get, okay. I was just thinking this was going really well. So maybe as long it's, it would be easier for me if the recommended thing to do was to like weave back and forth. I feel like this circular thing is making me like underestimate how much room I have left and so I'm just punching away and then it's like no you really didn't need to keep going but maybe that's fine maybe by the time we get to the end we will have figured it out we will have gotten the hang of this Because even though this section is saying, like, do the whole thing, we're going to punch here and then that's going to close that gap. So we have to do this in two sections for sure. Okay, I think we're getting the hang of this, but yeah, it definitely hurts your hands. Is there a way to do this that doesn't hurt your hands after a while? Let me know. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, and see, now there's gonna be a gap there, but I'm meant to just keep going. So maybe it's fine. I'm not sure. Because now I'm at the end of the outline and we still have more to fill in, but we weren't able to turn around. I don't know, that feels, that seems better, I guess. And then we can just, I guess we just push them into place. Cause again, my brain sees these things as gaps 
being like, that all needs to be filled, even though the punch is bigger than that. Like this, I'm like, that's white space. Why am I not trying to fill that? But I, it's bigger than the hoop or the, the stabber, the needle, that's the word. So I guess we don't do that. But it feels wrong. Okay. Again, feels like we have gaps, but I just need to trust that that's fine. Even though this looks like a gap. We're trusting the process, people. And then, you know, I guess if worse comes to worse and we're absolutely like not happy with some of the things, we can probably go back in. See, like these fibers that we punched out, I feel like these aren't supposed to be here. Again, these look like gaps. Excuse me. That might have been too short. I don't know. I don't know. So that's, there's gonna be a lot of that, guys. I'm sorry. It's gonna be a lot of me being like, I don't know. It's fine. I'm glad you're all here to experience me attempting to needle punch for the very first time. We are working through the self doubt. <laughs> working through the self doubt. I'm gonna have to take a granola bar snack break soon. Cause I can feel my blood sugar dropping as well as my sanity. <laughs> Continue filling in this section. To be fair, if we've, man we've managed to get two colors done, we're more than halfway done if we end up finishing this section by the end of stream, which is wild. This might take, and see, wasn't I saying that this was gonna take less time than um, whatchamacallit, the knitting. And so far it has. I feel like at least with the knitting, I felt kind of confident towards the end. Right now, I'm not sure how I feel. I assume this is going fine. It's pretty straightforward in terms of what you're supposed to be doing. But in terms of aesthetically, if it's actually gonna look good i'm not sure but it also feels like we can probably fake it like if we just manipulate the fibers and like floof them up a little bit i think we can fake it even if it's not a hundred percent you know where i guess to be fair we couldn't fake the knitting so again my theory still stands the knitting will have been the hardest kit we have done in terms of just like me spiraling and being like, what the hell is going on? The crap, the um, miniature kit had moments of that. And by moments, I mean only when we were becoming a miniature electrician and I almost, I melted the shrink wraps, but we learned from our mistakes pretty quickly. And so that was fine. So yeah, so far the only craft that has made me question my sanity 
was the knitting. So I think that's not bad. Watch embroidery suck. <laughs> Just kidding. I think it'll be one of the easier ones, hopefully, except it'll probably make me do French knots and that will suck. Cause I think some of the techniques, embroidery techniques I've already employed while cross stitching. We just have to learn more. So we are just like that one, I assume will be adding more to skills I've already acquired. Um, whereas these were whole ass new crafts, you know what I mean? So they're slightly different in terms of what we're doing, but it's good. I feel like we've been learning lots. I feel like this is, I don't know. When the zombie apocalypse happens and everybody's gone into, you know, bunkers and we all have to bring certain skills to the table, I will have plethora of craft skills to provide. Whether or not that will be helpful, who knows? But at least I will have them, you know? I can make the bunker aesthetically pleasing via fiber arts in many different forms. Oh. Is there not enough room for me to be doing this? I assumed there was enough room to do this, but maybe there wasn't. You'll be keeping everyone warm. That's true, that's true. Now we know how to knit. To be fair, I think so far, yes. In terms of the crafting skills that I have acquired so far that will be the most beneficial in the event of a zombie apocalypse, knitting is one of them. I think if we learn to sew like clothing and learn to hand sew, like we could do repairs. I think I could probably do that anyway it could be in various terms of jankiness. You know, it might not look the greatest, but I think that we can do. But yeah. <laughs> and then also too, guys, all of, even if, even if needle felting and, you know, cross stitching and things can't actually be beneficial during the apocalypse, the implements can. Could you imagine, you, you guys saw the needle felting torture device. I think I could stab a few zombies with that. And then obviously the needle felting needles will be helpful for like, I don't know, sewing wounds and shit maybe. I could cross stitch you some little stitches to keep your, you know, maybe. So who knows? Transferable skills, guys. What transferable skills do you have to help you survive a zombie apocalypse? Let me know. What skills would you bring? Does anyone have any good, does anyone know how to forage? I would like to learn how to forage. You know, does anyone know if we have to go scrounging in the woods? <laughs> Apocalypse girl, yeah, no, who knows? Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to learn how to forage because then if we are in the apocalypse and we have to find food um, to know what is edible and what's not <laughs> hiding behind you in your craft skills, yeah. The only thing though, is I also do say that I don't run for anything so if the zombies are fast, like left for dead zombies, Megan, uh, I can climb stuff. Hey Meg, that's a good skill. That's a good skill. You can get to the tops of trees. Maybe there's, maybe there's fruits and nuts and things at the tops of trees. So you can go and scrounge up top. I do say though, like I said, I don't run for anything. So I always joke that if these are left for dead zombies that can move fast, I'm, I'm getting eaten. That's what's happening. I'm sorry. I will not run even if there is a zombie apocalypse. I'm like survival of the fittest, you know? And I know I am not one of them. I can run around in circles and confuse them. Yeah, that's true. That That's helpful. <laughs> Okay, there we go. We filled in this section. Again, I'm trying to make less gap. Like I'm trying to embrace the space. T-Rex arm, yeah. 
There we go. Actually, you know what? I think we're we're figuring out the technique and we're figuring out the spacing because I do think that this may have been the best spaced one so far. This one is a bit on the falling apart side. Um, but again, I think we can just fake it. So it's fine. But you know, it's all good. There we go. Cool. Oh, yeah, we might. <laughs> I don't know if we can do this for a whole three hours. Well, maybe for all, it's a good thing it's the weekend now and I'm gonna spend my time recovering. So we'll come back on Tuesday and hopefully I will have the arm strength to continue. I think needle felters must all have really buff forearms. Or not needle felters, needle punchers. Cause this shit <laughs> does a number on them for sure. So because this divot is the entire width of a needle punch, I am not gonna attempt to go back on it. We are embracing the gap we need. I'm gonna cut this cause it is in my way and I can't see shit. We're trying to felt. God damn it. There we go. <laughs> okay. That's And by broke something, I mean like messed up the uh, stitches. Was that it? Was that all I needed to, to go in and do? I think so. We are learning that less is more when it comes to the punching, I think. So now this has a bit of a gap, but again, we will smoosh it into place and I think it will be fine. Okay. Yeah, it's like, I don't know why it's sinking in on itself like that. It's probably because the structural integrity of the canvas is disappearing as we stab it. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, I don't want to pull these out because I think these are actual loops, so I don't want to cut those in case we need them to maneuver stuff later. Because I think a bunch of these have like shrunken in because we stabbed through the, um, the structural integrity of the canvas. And so we might need to play with these little loops later. So I'm gonna let that stay. So we have this tiny little section here, this larger section here. So we have one, two, three, four, five sections left in terms of this color. And we have like a half hour. So I think we're gonna crush this. We might even be starting on the le the the Lex, the next color. See, I think this is the kit that should have, you know how the, ne the knitting kit was like, this will take two hours and it took us what, 12? This one, I think, is maybe gonna take six. It doesn't have a time limit on it. I think we can probably get this done in two streams because we also had karaoke break 
And so, you know, we've been we've been trucking along. Things have been going well. The rainbow one's really cute. Oh, there's cute ones. Just conquer all the kits, you know? Okay, let's go down here. And again, less is more. That one I think is a bit wonky because again, structural integrity of the campus. That's fine. Trusting the process. Oh yeah, let's have a snack break. Let's let's replenish the blood sugar as a smidge. Still campaigning for Nature Valley to sponsor me. Because, you know, I always eat their granola bars on stream. I think that would be an excellent option for them. I am an excellent investment opportunity. <laughs> er, there we go. I think we have to be careful around this section because again, this is the part where the canvas, I think, is structurally waning. So just trying to be cognizant of that in my placement of these guys. Thank you, Pete. Have we been have we been in craft gremlin mode for too long, eh? Two and a half hours of craft gremlining. <laughs> Ooh. Get up and stretch. <laughs> yes, too long. Exactly, right? Yeah. Ooh. Resident stream paramedic Pete is on standby <laughs> for any and all craft gremlining. We're we're getting fed, watered, stretched. He takes care of us, guys. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Need to like stretch our arms out. Stretch out our forearms. I think this was one when I was rock climbing. They told taught us to do because then it would help like stretch the tendons out in here where you take it. I think you're actually maybe we meant to go the other way. I don't know. Maybe this way? No, I think it's this way. Ugh. There we go. That helps. Excellent. <laughs> Back to stabbing. How much you wanna bet when I put this video, like when I eventually, cause I've been trying to upload all my VODs to my YouTube channel just to keep a record of them there. How much you want to bet this one's going to get demonetized or um, put behind like an age restriction? Because I keep saying the word stab so frequently. <laughs> They're going to be like, this is inappropriate. 
for all ages. And I'm like, guys, we talking about crafts. Don't, don't worry. Don't be like that. Urgh. There's a lot of grunting happening on this stream, so I'm sure that could be taken out of context as well. Though it could be seen, I don't know, I feel like fitness trainers grunt a lot too. So, you know, it could be seen as a fitness video. Because this is giving my forearms a workout. For reals, for reals. How I wasn't so to <laughs> Honestly, it's very neglected. It is a very neglected channel. Um, I did nothing to... Like, I really lost the plot on uploading consistently last year. So I think that's why I wasn't really promoting it too much. But I'm trying, I'm trying to be better this year. So, thank you for that, Pete. I appreciate that. Um, we're trying to be better. I don't know what, why this tail has gotten so long now. I hope things didn't slide out. Because I feel like I cut all of the long ones short, so now I'm concerned. Should we take a look and see if some stitches have fallen out? I don't think that's what's happened oh maybe it looks like right here yeah it looks like here we have some stitch fallout yeah uh oh that's not good yeah we definitely just made a giant hole in the fabric but that's fine we will we'll fix it <laughs> i don't know how but we will or we just ignore it and hope for the best that is also an option. Cause it seems, again, I knock on, knock on wood. Knock on this wood. Um, we seem to have fixed our like placement issues or we're, we're working on the depth and consistency. So we didn't just like aggressively stab a hole in the integrity of the fabric. But I think by going so close to this, it's now ruffling the section that we did fuck up because all of these stitches are coming out now. So we'll have to go in and try to fix that. I don't know how we will, but we'll have to go in there and figure it out because I've just pushed all of these stitches out. Luckily, this doesn't look like it's fucked up too much. Like everything still seems like it's there, so that's fine. But the back end is getting ridiculous and being a little bit silly, so. I don't know. I do not know. Yeah, that one we need to sort out. I don't wanna cut it, but I'm gonna, can I just, can I just push it back in a little bit? There we go, that like kinda fixed it. I don't know. Okay, I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of that, but <laughs> for now, we'll just keep going. What direction am I going in this direction? So hopefully, again, it, it's, it, it's completely counterintuitive to my cross-stitching brain that we're leaving all of this white space, but then you flip it over. Oh no, see, maybe not though. I don't know. You're meant to flip it over and then it's not meant to look like there's such a big gap, but it still looks like there is. So I don't know. We're still working through the kinks. I guess when all of this again, if we can fake it and smush all this down, then it then it'll be okay. But yeah, see now this has too many gaps. But also, if we were to go in and try to fix that, I feel like we would break the um the thing. Maybe right there. Like there was a space for one more. We jumped the gun on that one, but I don't think we can go back in and just do a, a, a single punch, you know what I mean? 
I don't know. We'll just keep going. But yeah, this is now getting ridiculous back here. I did not mean to do that. This we can cut. These I don't want to cut because again, I think those are stitches that have come out because we didn't do it correctly. Same with this. So I think unfortunately more stitches are going to come out when we come along here as well. Up here is going to be great. Up here is going to be fine. This is, section is going to be a mess, but that's fine. We will persevere. Keep calm and carry on as they say. So if I try my best to start this here and then again, we are trying not to make the problem worse. <laughs> Keep clam and craft on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what we're, we're doing. We're trying our best. To keep calm and carry on. Keep clam and craft on. And see, this is supposed to go up here. Oh, no, that was a bad idea. Urgh. Oh, I liked clam, don't worry. You're back, how goes the punching? It's going well. I do think we punched too close together and ruined the structural integrity of the canvas. So now all of these bumps are coming out because all of this was not this chaotic. So we're slowly learning the correct distance with which to be punching. Um, but yeah. So that is a thing, <laughs> but I'm hoping we can fix it. I'm hoping, or at least we can like fake it and like push everything sort of back in a way that isn't too structurally messed up. You know what I mean? Am I not doing this correctly? No, I am. So I don't understand why. It's feeling so not good, but yeah. The thing is though, when I turn it over, it looks fine. It's just the back that looks like a mess. So I'm hoping that whatever we did, at least there's enough um, loops to sort of close the gap and make it look okay. That is my want. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. Cause yeah, I'm having a really hard time. Like this is ca completely counterintuitive to my cross stitching brain. You see that now doesn't look, this looks like there needs to be another one here. But that's gonna fuck it up. Yeah, we, I shouldn't have done that. Oh well. So what the fuck happened here? Okay, okay, let's turn this around. So you need to go in here. And we're just gonna have to cut this because yeah, so when it's like this, it's fine, but then you can see some of the spaces here are getting like, I don't know. We're seeing some gaps, whereas these are nice and full and all put together. And these, I think some of these back stitches here are all falling apart because there's no, no um, case, like nothing for them to hold on to. So all of this is just like, yeah, coming apart. I don't even know where this one's supposed to go. And then this one's meant to be here, but then so is this one. And then this guy. But it's like, as long as we don't look at it too hard, 
Again, I'm hoping we can just sort of like pull some of these through and just sort of like fake it. And then hopefully we don't, I don't know. Cause this is another one that's like looking a little bit like it's falling apart. But yeah. So other than, you know, ruin the ruining the structural integrity of the center of the needle punch, it's going well. I definitely think, yeah, this section here is a problem, but now that we sort of, I think we're getting far enough away from this section once we finish this number two thread that when we're going back through here, I think think we managed to salvage the structural integrity a little bit that it should be okay in these other sections hopefully fingers and toes crossed i hope your errands went well chud chud i hope you were all right in the cold you bundled up and things were successful for you okay we have two more sections in this color so let's hope and pray to the punch gods that we are, you know, doing the craft justice. It was right at lunchtime. Hour. Ooh, super cold and busy. But they went well. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I guess because it's around lunchtime. So then everybody's gone out trying to get their stuff done, which then makes it a bit yeah, like you said, busy and a bit chaotic, but that's good. I'm glad you were able to accomplish the things. There we go. <laughs> I wonder why the emphasis for needle punching is to go in a um, circle. Because I feel like I would be able to get the density correct if I was allowed to go in a weaving pattern. I am convinced that I am misjudging like this. I'm sure maybe I could have fit more in. I don't know, but that seems all right. The section looks okay. You could really go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I have this... <laughs> inability when I'm working on something and especially if I start in a certain technique it's like the pattern says we go in a circle so gosh damn we're going in a circle so I don't know maybe maybe when we're doing the background we can try to go just back and forth and see if that works for us um I don't know we'll see But this part seemed all right. This part turned out okay in terms of like the distance. Um, but I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, see this this Mickey Mouse garbage back here, we are, we're not sure about. And it looks like here as well, we accidentally popped a, popped a loop. So you know what? Maybe this is harder than knitting. Maybe just to get, you know, the finesse right. Okay. 
we have one more section I think this little section here to do in color number two and then we move on to number three which I'm hoping we have learned lessons and we will now because it's like do I want to be accurate yes I want to successfully color in the lines but some of these points are sharper than the thickness of the needle yeah am I committing one of the most common mistakes right now Aurora because I think so Just about making sure there's slack. Oh yeah, okay. Ooh. Oh shit, that's just meant to stay in there. Damn it! I always do that. Okay. Do we need? Is that what's gonna help stop us from fucking up the canvas? Or maybe from the things getting pulled out? Cause I think, I don't know, we probably could do more slack. But I think we have a decent amount of slack. What are the other ones? The fabric is taut too, so I might be adding some problems for you. Oh, interesting. Oh, so the actual tautness of the fabric could be a problem. So maybe, what is this, trimmets? Maybe trimmets is being dumb. By punching with the canvas down. Oh, right, right, right. Because maybe we are punching at an angle. I really wish this thing was a bit shorter. That's the only problem with it. I think it's meant to be like a lap stand. So I'm like, if I could just cut a chunk off and bring this down, it's like being too high up for me to see. The other option is it for, because then it's like if I make it a proper lap stand, which is then me like sticking this part underneath my leg. I then feel like it's too far. Maybe we have to move up. I can't move that. <laughs> I can't move my chair up anymore. We just shrunk. Hi guys, let me fix this. Okay, yeah, because this is as tall as the chair goes. So if this actually sits on my lap, this is now, actually we can make this taller. So maybe we make this part taller. Okay, let's, let's, but then, okay. And then if we do this, maybe, that's kind of a weird angle for you guys, but it's not the worst. It's quite a long video ago. Yeah, where did Tasha, honestly, yeah, I went on a little adventure. <laughs> okay. So this is me sitting on the lap stand and then Hmm, okay. And then if we put this sort of straight up and down, and then maybe that will help. And then we can bring you guys down. Yes, I will click on that now. I'm a 13th century country. And then I got the link. Okay. Okay, let us, let's, maybe there's like a quick, a quick version. Maybe there's like a summary, like a quick summary we can. And you can seem to get it to work. And this video is for you. I'm going to go over all the comments. Maybe she, in the description, does she just list them all? That would be helpful. What are the things that's 16 minutes okay and uh, da, 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 da. let's pop you guys out and then let's take a look at this real and quick so beginners make when starting with punch uh. there are a few things that you really have to do in order for it to work Okay. Did you not put? Oh. Hey guys, so no. I'm back with the new video. Have you been trying punch needle and you can't seem to get it to work? And this video. 
As you can see, it's really closed and tight as a drum. So you want it to be tight. Okay, that's fine. That makes sense. When you don't unwind your ball of yarn. So you start punching. We need to unwind the yarn more. Unwound. Okay. Exact same thing happens again. This is on tension and you start pulling. We don't want slack. tension. Everything is Lots up. of slack. Everything okay. Cut off the knot. And just continue like that until you want make sure that you don't pull up your needle too far yes if you go off like this and then push it back in and do yeah. something like this so that's part of the issue aim for every stitch tiny stitches here and these come i will go this way that way and that way and i'm sure the stitches are not going to it yeah, keeping in the same direction, stitches. yeah. The stitches forms. So when I turn it a little bit, it's a little... So for example, here I have this linen fabric. It's quite dense, you can't really see any... Okay, different fabrics, okay. This one that I have right here. What happens when you stab a hole in your fabric <laughs> accidentally? Then what? Which is very comfortable to punch with. And this is still quite fragile. So that's That looks like the fabric we're using. Beginners, but it is possible to punch with this one. But the best one, I think, is this one, or there's also another type of monk's cloth. Yeah, that's the best one, but that's not the one we like got. Burlap, for example, small yarns. So it's comfortable to punch. I really I love this piece, and I really love that. Thin needle in hmm. this Yeah, I know what you mean, right? Because some of these things are like, how do you fix it? You get different fabric and different needles, and I'm like, what if this is all we got? <laughs> what if this is it? You know, we'll try, we'll try this way. Did I finish using this? Are we, hang on, hang on. In all of my faffing, did we actually finish all of the sections that we needed to? I think we might have. Yeah, because I cut it, and then we can cut this. And then I'm pretty sure this is all of number two. This part, again, we will address this later. This bullshit. <laughs> we will address at another date. But now I think we move on to number three. We are just trucking along. To be fair, we have what? Like four minutes left of stream? So maybe maybe we call it today and we the spaghetti bit is a tension issue i know the spaghetti so i think too though the tension is definitely part of it but i think as well these are old stitches so this was a stitch these this little section here was a stitch but because the whole thing has a big hole in it the two loops became one loop on the other side of the fabric if that makes sense so i think that's part of what happened is the the fact that I made too many sections and then they were too taut and then like I don't know if you can tell here but like this is just we full-on shredded the shit start singing to it honestly yeah shredding the crap of this so I don't think that they have any more space to hold on to but then it's weird because they still look like full stitches. So you're right. It could be a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. So, but it looks fine on the outside. You know what I mean? Except for this part. We probably could have put a few more stitches in it. So maybe it's fine. But yeah, I'm nervous to cut these, but maybe we do just because they're kind of in the way right now. And maybe it'll help us because like I said, it seems fine. Um, so if we cut these, 
I might also, yeah, see, you can see this is just fibrous mess. There's nothing there for it to hold on to. But we just leave it, I think, and hope for the best. I think that's a good idea. And that's the other thing too, though, is I think as well, like you said, because this is attached onto a thing, we now can't pull it out, frick. And it also is giving me paper, not paper cuts. Um, what are those things called? The wood ones? Splinters. It's giving me splinters as well. But yeah, because if we had like a hoop, then we could pull this to get it to be taut again. Yeah, splinter, yeah. And so right now, this is now a bit loosey-goosey, which might also then impact our tension situation. So that's not ideal. Because see, if I'm able to tighten this here, then I think that will help with this section. Down here is still pretty taut, up here is still pretty taut, which I think helps explain why maybe this section is actually turning out really well. Why am I still standing on this? I don't need to. Let's pop this over here. Um, but yeah, so interesting. I can definitely see like why, I don't know, kits can be good and maybe not so good. But yeah, so yeah, so if we were able to like hold this, I think that would help moving forward. But I also think too though, it might further show the fact that we've pulled all of this section out and it might make the hole a bit bigger. But I don't know, that is a problem for future Tasha. Does anybody have any raid suggestions on this wonderful Friday? But yeah, you can see how it like pops in and then pops out on itself. That's definitely, this is loosey goosey tension right here. Oh well, <laughs> again, we will fix it. Bob the Builder style. Can we fix it? Hopefully. <laughs> we can just cover it with glue and be like, ah, you can't, you can't tell anymore. It's fine. I don't want to lose this threader. I feel like this threader is very important. So we will stick it in the thing. These are all of our little thread scraps. Okay. This is our little ball of yarn that we don't need any more. And then same with the yellow one. We Yeah, again, number two, we have a lot left over. So we can definitely make something with these. Because look at that, we still have like a whole ball. This one, not so much, but this one, we got tons. So we'll leave these here. And then Tuesday, I think we'll get this done before the end of next week. That is my prediction. I know I'm infamously usually bad at predicting um, the time scale of how we will finish projects, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. I'm feeling pretty confident that we will finish it before the end of next week, which is pretty good. All right, any raid suggestions? Who's online, who's online? Maggie's online, Saul's online, Artemis is online. Oh, Noongday's still online. Guys, let's go and see Noongday. She's been working on her um, Tira cosplay for TwitchCon. Um, and she's been working on this all day. She has been working her butt off and we should go and send her some support. Hopefully. She's not about to raid out because that would be awkward. All right. Because like I said, she's been at this since like 10 a.m. UK time. So she's been on, she's been here for a while. But I think that's excellent. Let's go give her some love. And I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. And I will see you guys, hopefully, on Tuesday. Thank you so much for coming on this new journey with me. Again, trying new things, learning new crafts, living our best life, doing the most. 
Let's go and see our friend. Okay, bye.